In this video, we're going to be installing the Eclipse IDE uh, specifically for use with C++. Now, for the, for the course, we do recommend that you use Visual Studio if that works out for you. However, uh, there may be some kind of issue with uh, you and, the, and the, the free license for using the community version. Or, if you're a Linux or Mac user, uh, this, as of this recording, is not going to be an option for you. However, there is another viable option for the course, and that is the Eclipse IDE, the in Integrated Development Environment, that we're going to be installing in this video. Uh, in, uh, this is a Windows 10. Uh, we, we are in Windows 10. However, as we go through the video, we'll be showing you uh, different places where uh, you can get the resources that you need to install on a Mac or a Linux uh, machine. So this, this video will still be helpful to you even if uh, you are a Mac or Linux user. So. Uh, before we get started with the actual installation, I need to tell you a, a couple of things that uh, about using Eclipse and getting it to work correctly. You actually need three things uh, for Eclipse to run correctly for C++. So you need the Eclipse program itself, of course, but in order for it to even run, you need something called a Java Runtime Environment installed or a JRE and in order to use it for C++ you need to have a C++ compiler installed as well. Now you probably have uh, a, a JRE installed and you might have a C++ compiler installed. So here's what we're going to do. This is how the video is going to go. Um, please don't be too intimidated by the length of, of the video. We're going to cover a lot of bases along the way. But we're going to start by assuming that you have the JRE and the C++ compiler installed, which are currently installed here on this machine, and show you just how simple uh, that installation can be. It's not really so much of an installation as it is just getting the files, really. Uh, and then... I'll uh, stop the video and go in and uninstall the JRE and at least part of the C++ compiler and then resume the video and show you the problems that you can encounter and you can see, oh, okay, here's, you know, this is what can happen if you don't have a JRE or if you don't have a compiler installed. And also show you how you can get those and get those installed uh, and uh, again along the way pointing out uh, the differences there for Linux and Mac. Though this this first part of the video when we're installing uh, is going to be pretty pretty analogous for for uh, Linux and Mac as it is for Windows. So let's get started. This video is going to be pretty long as it is so let's go on. So to install the program you start by going to eclipse.org and I'll retype that. Notice it is eclipse.org not com <laughs> muscle memory org not dot com now with all web pages they they change from time to time but what you're going to want to look for this is actually changed today they've added this little thing um, for the eclipse con but what you're looking for is uh, some type of link for IDE and tools so I'm going to click on that now uh, some very kind people have already got things set up here for use with C++. Um, th this was, uh, I'm not exactly sure about the history, but basically it was originally for Java and everything, so uh, we're going to get, but we're going to go for the C++ version here. Now, um, you're going to need to look for, and here you see on the right hand side uh, 
the particular operating system that you're wanting to install Eclipse on. So here you see where you can get um, the version for Mac and then Linux 32 and 64-bit and uh, let's see this one is 64-bit machine. Now what you're going to get is some type of archive file you know such as a zip file. I think it's different for these, can't remember uh, but uh, when you, I'm going to go ahead and click on this when you get that file, see here it is a zip file for Windows essentially you're just going to need to extract the files in there and run it. I mean that's really all there is to it. But before we proceed I want to point out here it's a good idea to read these software user agreements. This is a, a an open source type project so um, you shouldn't have any problems with you know using this for free or anything but it's a good idea to, to read this and especially like down the road make sure you know if, you know as you get more advanced make sure any uh, credit is given where credit is due so we're gonna go ahead and go to download I'm gonna save as now this is the archive file see there is zip but what I'm gonna do just for the you know to make it simpler for demonstration I'm actually going to put it in a folder on my desktop. Now you can of course put it wherever you want and that'll be a recurring theme here. New folder and I'm just going to call this oops, Eclipse for C++ files because this is the files not the shortcut it's a folder and we're going to save our archive into there. Okay, this shouldn't take too terribly long. Um, as a reference point, uh, this machine gets about a hundred megabits per second download off the internet. So, depending on your connection, it could take more or less time. Of course, there could be traffic issues and everything as well. Actually, I need to clear my throat real quick, so I'm just going to pause this very quickly. Okay, and we're almost done here. All right. Um, all right. Open, let's open the folder. Now, with your Mac or Linux, you're probably familiar with how to uh, extract uh, archive files. But in Windows, a zip is pretty easy. Extract all. I'm just going to go with the default. It'll extract it into a folder in the same place. Okay. We are uh, actually almost done with the <laughs> with the uh, installation. So what you're going to look for is you're going to look for uh, an executable file in here. And basically all there is to it is just uh, starting that up. You can, we'll make a shortcut here in, in Windows, but okay, it opened up a new, just to make it clear where we are. So this was the original archive file. And so it extracted into here. This is was a folder inside the archive. And here you see an executable. That simple. So um, before we double click that, I'm going to go ahead and make a short uh, shortcut uh, in these videos. A left click is is well, let me click now. A left click is blue. A right click is a uh, orange or yellowish orange. So I'm going to right click. Okay, and I'm going to create a shortcut, and then I'm going to right click and cut, minimize this, minimize this, and I'm going to, oh, let me move this down here, that's the folder I created for the files, and I'm going to right click again, and paste, and I want to rename this. 
I'm going to rename this Eclipse. Oop. Uh, Eclipse for C++. So now we've got a, a link. So you could just double click on this, but hey, we've got our shortcut now and double click. And you'll see a splash screen come up. Now your splash screen could look different depending on what, what version you've downloaded. You may be getting a more recent. Now this comes up. Uh, you can change this uh, to where it doesn't come up every time, but typically it'll come up every time. And what it's asking you is, where do you want all of the projects, you know, or slash programs to be stored where you're uh, that you're working on today? And that's it'll also be which ones do you want to go back to. Now, in programming, it's really good to be uh, very organized. So, what I'm going to do is actually, uh, I'm going to go to the desktop, and uh, let's see, where is that folder that we created? Eclipse for C++ files. I'm going to create a workspace uh, folder inside that Eclipse for C++ files and put it there. Of course, like I said, it's a recurring theme. You can save things wherever you want, however it works for you, however you'd like to organize it. But I'm just going to call this Workspaces. And then uh, I'm actually going to go one step further. And um, make a new folder inside workspaces for part one just to keep everything nice and organized and separated out okay so here you see and it's workspace alright so once you figured out where you want to save your stuff and again you can change that around when you open up you know go around different ones uh, once you're in the program, it uh, it will let you change your workspace folder, but uh, I think it pretty much just restarts the program. All right, here we are. I maximized that. Uh, this welcome screen is is really nice, but I don't particularly need that right now. Okay, and so if you're going to use uh, Eclipse, you know, on a regular basis for the for the course, you'll get very accustomed to, to this screen. This is where you're going to be doing a lot of your work. You'll be coding in here. Here's your files and stuff. This will tell you what's going on. Um, but we need to check if it's running. Uh, it, that is to say, if it's gotten to this point, you're probably fine with your JRE. You know, when we first started, that splash screen came up. If you've got uh, if you don't have a JRE or you've got an old one, you can get some error messages there. If you don't have it at all, then it'll just say you don't have one. But you can get some other messages if you've got an old one where it says, oh, I can't find this or I can't find that. But if you've gotten here, you've gotten your JRE. But we, uh, we need to test this to make sure that, uh, that our compiler is installed. So without going into too much detail, we'll get into things about creating projects and stuff you know, later in the course when, you've, when you're creating your first program to learn how to use these. Um, and we will have a video for Visual Studio and Eclipse, and throughout the course we'll also have some other videos in Eclipse showing you how to use this. But we need to test it, uh, and fortunately there is a, an easy built-in way to test to see if everything's working okay. And that is, uh, you can either click on the down arrow and uh, click on C++ project, or if you click on this, uh, it's kind of a similar thing. That's uh, There's your C++ project there. It'll take you to the same place. And that is this. Okay, so here's where you can, uh, oh, first of all, check... Hello World C++ project. So 
this has already got everything started so this is this is the test here so that you can test when you look over here uh, I'm not to be perfectly honest I'm not exactly sure what this is for um, but have read in different places don't use that uh, so I'll just repeat that don't use that now right here I know is the compiler that is installed on uh, on this uh, machine for Windows but you need to select something if it's not there if if this is all you have well then you need to go back and find uh, a compiler but if just because it's here doesn't mean everything you need is there and you'll see that later in the video so you need to select that and you also need to give your project a name now this is a this is kind of an obscure little tip uh, that uh, uh, a while back when I was doing a, a video for for this in, install uh, if you put install in the project name it causes all kinds of problems and grief so just make sure and don't put install in there so I'm just gonna abbreviate it test inst for install but not type out install I'm not sure exactly why that happens and we're gonna be doing multiple versions of this throughout the video so we're gonna start with number one and finish now you'll see some stuff kinda happening and popping up and everything here um, you don't see any like up oh, nope there they are bugs there it goes it went through and cleared them all out everything's fine and you don't see red squiggles and everything so you're pretty much uh, ready to go but we can uh, test it very quickly um, and see so you've got your include uh, you need some more stuff here and it will automatically do that so in Eclipse the first time you do a program uh, you need to build it first so to build that's this little shortcut if you can't see it in the video it's like a little document with a 010 on it and you'll see that it will actually so it's created a debug and some binary files and all that kind of stuff over here so that's pretty good and so for the first time with with any project the first time you're gonna need to build it first um, then you can run so that's just a little green play button now I'm not sure if this is going to happen but just as a, a forewarning depending on the antivirus that you use the first time you run a program your antivirus might jump in and say hey wait a minute I don't know this program and it'll halt and it'll search through it and all that other kind of stuff so don't freak out that's normal that's just your antivirus doing its job so let's see if that happens here uh, I've got the antivirus on here because I'm, I am connected to the internet because I was doing downloads so um, but run yep it did sure enough hang on this file may contain something no problems fine so it's working okay now to check to make sure that everything is is working uh, correctly um, it, down here is your output window uh, so it says terminated uh, exit value zero which actually you'll learn later on that comes from this return zero up here but this is the output that you're looking for make sure that it says uh, hello world right there and uh, that it terminated normally it didn't get hung up it's not stuck in in something uh, and just since we're here I will show you very quickly this is so this is your uh, console screen your output for your other programs as you go you're going to want a bigger a bigger screen in Visual Studio it automatically pops up you know with its uh, separate screen and everything for you to look at but here there is a maximize so if you maximize there you go so you've got a much fuller screen to work with your you know with your program input and output and you can see you know more more what it's supposed to look like um, to go back to the previous screen do not hit minimize uh, hit restore there you go and it will automatically bring you back to this screen so you're good to go uh, uh, you're ready uh, to write your first program when we get to that in the course you're all set up you'll be sitting on go or maybe not what if you did have some problems with uh, uh, with the JRE or the compiler well 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to close this. I'm going to stop the recording and go in and uninstall the JRE and parts of the compiler. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like. What kind of, you know when you when you when you have issues with those things, and also how to fix those and where you can get for Windows, Linux, and Mac get those. Uh, uh, get those resources and uh, so that you can get them installed so everything works fine for uh, for Eclipse. Okay, so I've gone back and uninstalled uh, the JRE and part of the C++ compiler, actually the C++ component, and so uh, as we've stated before at the, at the beginning of the video, you need both of those things in order for Eclipse to run properly uh, and and to use it for C++ programming. So uh, before I, s I, I get into that, let's do a quick review of how easy the installation can actually be uh, if you if you do already have those two installed. So let's go back. The um, uh, first we started by going to the eclipse.org website. I'll just click some back buttons here and we clicked on IDE and tools. We looked for the IDE then we looked for the C++ then we looked for the operating system we wanted to uh, install Eclipse, Eclipse 4 and in this case it was Windows 64 bit and then uh, you on your own read the software user agreement right okay and then we downloaded the zip file which in our case you could put it anywhere you want we put in a folder on our desktop um, there's our desktop that we called that there's our archive file we extracted it and it extracted it here and in there is uh, are executable and then you can just run that executable or what we did is we made a shortcut on the desktop right here and our installation is done right so we can just go ahead and uh oh so again like I said when that splash screen comes up or tries to come up you'll get some type of error message here we don't have uh, Java uh, Java runtime environment installed and it tells you uh, if you've got an older version again the splash screen may come up and then it may come up with a different error message saying that it can't find some component of uh, the JRE so this is actually a pretty simple fix so we'll just click on OK I say go to a good trusted source here and so we're going to go to Oracle. You've probably heard of Oracle. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. And again, websites change. So look for downloads. Here you have it pops up popular downloads, Java for developers. So that, that's going to work. That's going to work just fine. And you'll see why here very shortly. And so this comes up with this uh, 8U131. That just simp simply means version 8 update 131. So um, here's where you've got to make a little bit of a decision. I'm going to help you with that. What you need is the JRE. Okay. But I suggest going ahead and getting the JDK. Right. It's uh, the Java development kit. Now, really, you only need it if you're f for uh, programming in Java, but hey, you might want to get into that later down the road. So it's like, well, why not just go ahead and install it now? And here is the key part. It includes the complete JRE plus tools for developing. So I say go ahead and go for the JDK. Okay, and uh, that's lit up. Here we go. So again, this is your Java development kit uh, 8, 
update 131 and here you see different uh, uh, versions for different operating systems so you've got your your Linux and uh, the, the ARM is uh, like mobile processors and stuff like that you can find the one you want um, here's ones for Spark uh, anyway we're going to need this this is 32-bit uh, windows this is 64 so we need the 64 however before we go forward again it's good to read the license agreements and uh, in in this case you'll see if you try to download you download see so it depends on your version click the little red arrow uh oh so thing is is you do need to accept that before you download so we're going to go ahead and download this um, again for uh, we're in Windows 10 64 bit so I'm going to download that for that you get the one that you need if you're using Mac or Linux get the one again this is uh, like 32 bit 64 bit so we're going to go ahead and click on that and I want to save as and I'm going to save it here in my same just to keep everything together Eclipse for C++ files and this will take just a couple of minutes um, well maybe not a couple but it won't take too long um, I'll go ahead and warn you when you run this at least in Windows um, there it will come up with a, a screen and uh, a, saying do you want to allow to make changes and all that and um, you know it's fine it's from Oracle and everything however uh, I will warn you that this particular software is good for making instructional videos but uh, it does have uh, a, a couple of little drawbacks one in particular is going to be when that window screen comes up all you'll see is black uh, it does not show that screen that says do you allow it to to uh, to make changes to your computer and all all that type of thing so that is coming up I'm just gonna let you know but again for Windows and Mac I mean the installation is going to be pretty pretty analogous you just need to make sure that you get the right version after you've read the license agreement and agreed right and we're almost done okay we're completed so I'm gonna close this again we're I'm just gonna close this little folder where we're just to, okay, okay so I put it in the folder on my desktop here again you put it wherever you want if you've got you know if you want to put it in you know a downloads folder let it go into there hey knock yourself out just uh, just make sure you stay stay organized organization is key in programming so I'm just gonna double click on that and run it and it's probably gonna come up with that black screen here or you'll see it as black in the video but there we go but I'll read it just says user account control do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device and just click on yes so it's going forward and it'll go through a little installation procedure this wizard will guide you through okay next uh, I say just go with all the um, the default stuff uh, it looks like maybe there were some leftover files from the uninstall there and it's copying okay, and it, it destination folder so like I said I'm just gonna go with the default and then it actually gets into the install screen Mm 
and so this is pretty painless relatively painless and so once this finishes we'll go back and see hey does that fix our problems with Eclipse and then we'll uh, not only open it but we will run that hello world uh, test program okay successfully installed um, you can read through these next steps if you like but I'm not going to do that in this video close okay I'll minimize our folder okay now let's run okay again so it's going to come back to the one that I was at before the the workspace so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that uh, that temp inst1 will show up. But look, hey, here we go. No error messages, none of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close our welcome screen. And here we are. All right, so we're good to go, right? Well, we still need to test this. So, um, And you'll actually even see there's this little red X. But let's go through this again. Um, C++ project. I'll select Hello World. There's our compiler, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. I just uninstalled part of it, not the whole thing. So it's still showing up. You may, again, you may have have it where it doesn't show up at all, uh, other than that cross GCC. But you need to have another one there. And if it's not there, then you you need to proceed to the next part of installing the compiler. But we're going to go ahead and and do this and call this test inst2 um, and we selected the compiler hello world project finish and there it is hmm see we got a bunch of little squiggles and stuff this is not a good sign but we can go ahead and try to build it um, so here's the issue error program G++ not found in path see so that's missing so we know that we've got a compiler issue we need to make sure that we get that it says G++ is C++ is what, what what's missing so um, we'll go ahead and close this oh and you see there's also the little red X there and a again we got the little bugs and squiggle red squiggle lines everywhere not good so with a whole Eclipse installation for most folks I'll close this this is where it can get a little tricky so I'm gonna try to help you out as best as I can and we'll start uh, with this page that I found that I think is pretty neat uh, I do not know this guy at all but uh, there, there's a link in the course uh, there's going to be a, a few links just below this video in the course uh, and one of those links will be to this page it's a little dated but I mean everything gets dated after a while right but this is his page for doing basically what we're doing in this video except uh, he does it a bit differently but you may find this as a good resource for um, this whole compiler stuff okay um, again uh, we're doing things a little bit differently but if you run into any any serious snags you might be able to go back into here and find some type of help with that but we're gonna move on here to uh, oh before I go to Apple alright Linux it's very very possible in Linux uh, depending on you know what packages you have and everything that you do have a compiler installed however it's possible like you saw in that example that part of it is missing especially that G++ there is a uh, Linux is installed on this on this machine and I tried it uh, it's a Fedora distribution but it doesn't have uh, the whole programming packages and everything on it and so when I did a test run it came up with a very similar message maybe identical actually and so what's really involved in Linux is it's still pretty easy you'll just need to look it up for 
for your distribution. And it's just going to be a matter of going into your uh, your terminal and accessing your repository with uh, with your installer and doing like that. For for example, um, the Linux installation on this is Fedora, and so it was just as simple as get it going into the terminal and typing. I think it was uh, sudo yum install something. So. Uh, type that, uh, hit enter, and then brrr, and then everything's fine. It's fixed. It's great. So, uh, if if you're a Linux user that's having some issues with um, with your compiler, just look it up. Like I said, for your your particular distribution, how to install it, and it'll be really easy to find. And you just go through it. I mean, very very simple. Now, moving on to uh, to Apple Max. This has changed uh, quite a bit. I was uh, reading up on this uh, somewhat, and uh, it's changed around. Originally, the C++ compiler came with Max, and then it didn't. Then they kind of like charged you something for it or something, and then they did it a different way. So it changes. However, it comes with Xcode. And so this is the Xcode page. I'll have a link. Uh, there will be a link underneath uh, this video and the course to going to the Xcode page and currently if you scroll to the bottom you can see what it says uh, on Apple devices it's easy as entering your Apple ID into Xcode preferences so um, here it's saying that the developer program membership is not required I think they had some kind of version at one point of the Apple developer program that was free not sure if they still have that but at any point, if you don't have Xcode, they have a handy little download button here. So you can download and install, and then um, you can check with the page because this this could change. But uh, if you if you're a Mac user and you've got uh, C++ compiler problems, go to the Xcode page. Okay. Now perhaps. Um, the trickiest. I'm going to pause this for just a second. Need to clear my throat. Okay. Um, perhaps the trickiest is uh, <laughs> as far as C installing C++ compilers is uh, doing it for Windows. So fortunately uh, some folks have done some great work here. I'll put this link in here or the the link will be underneath the video in the course for this page and you can see looking for the latest version um, you can check some of this stuff out and try to support this this site and these folks uh, if you like but I'm gonna click on um, download this Do you want to run or save? I'm actually going to do again the save as and save it in our same um, Eclipse for C++ files folder. This is going to be an installed pretty similar to this. Um, yeah, that's pretty simple, huh? Um, and I'll go back to, oh, I've already got one open. So it's right here. Now this is, there's a couple of things here. This is going to, um, this is going to be a little different in the video because it's still here. I just uninstalled some parts. So here you have view license. But when I click on install, uh, it doesn't get to that point. Okay. What you're going to want to do if you're a Windows user is install this for all users, not just the current user. So that's the second little tricky thing about this. So I'm going to hit cancel. What you need to do is right click and run as administrator. Okay, there's that same screen. It says, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Yes, and so it comes back up. It looks the same, right? But when you click install, now this is no longer grayed out and it is selected. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with installing for all users, sure, you can do this and then you don't have to run as administrator. But 
Uh, I'm just going to go with the default location and everything here. Now this is the other place where it's a little different. Applications already installed. Just show, I'm just going to go with reinstall here so you can see. So there's there's another little step or two here for us to go. Okay, continue. And again, the view license, make sure you view that license before you use. And then it comes up to here. Uh, sometimes, especially if you go back, you'll see this all packages. So this is all the detailed view and everything. Uh, I say stick with the basic setup. Um, now you see that there's already these three here. What you're going to need says C++ compiler here. And I'm going to mark for installation. The first time you install this, all of these boxes are going to be blank. And these are four are the ones that you're going to want to make sure to mark for installation. This one, this one, this one, and this one. You can install these other ones if you like, if for some reason you're interested in Objective-C or Fortran. But These are the, uh, the four that you need for this course here. So, And then you can go to Installation and Apply Changes. And so it'll go through OK to proceed, apply. It'll go through it. Now it's installing that C++ compiler. And all changes were applied successfully, so we can close. And we can close this. All right. Now, um, let's see. Here's our shortcut. And let's try this again. Again, it goes through. Uh, the splash screen here, workspace, everything's fine. No error messages along the way here because our, we've got a recent version of our JRE installed. And so we're going to come into here. Uh, X the welcome screen. Now we've still got red X's here and everything. When you have a compiler problem uh, in, in a workspace, it's kind of tricky to get things that had that problem. It's kind of tricky to get them to go away, to get those program those problems to go away. So since we've recently installed the the compiler, what we're going to do is we're just going to test it with a brand new Hello World project. So I'm going to go to C++ project Hello World. Here's this. Okay, so Hello World choose your compiler project name and we'll just call this test ints 3 this video is so long I don't want to go into more detail about why we're not just going to try to make those work finish okay so we're here a couple of bugs show up they should go away they did and we don't have any red squiggles so this is looking extremely promising now remember we need to build first to create so it's going to create extra files and everything in here we need to build first okay as build finished so it's still looking very positive the green little play button and sure enough terminated uh, exit value zero um, and that terminated that's that's a good thing that means that your program ran all the way through and it's done and it, what, what it didn't get hung up so again that's good and that is the message that we're supposed to get so uh, awesome we've we've worked it out uh, you're good to go now this <laughs> now you truly are good to go when uh, we get to creating creating a project and, and writing your first program later on in the course you are ready to go you have successfully installed Eclipse for C++ congratulations 
This concludes another video for Introduction to Programming with C++, brought to you by Logicomp. You can access the full course by going to the course homepage at logicomp.com slash intro cpp. While we are proud to offer this course free of cost to individuals, we do ask that if you continue to use the course, that you support its production and maintenance by making at least a small purchase from Logicomp Domains and Hosting. You can pick up a custom domain renewable annually for around 10 bucks at logicomp.com slash hosting. Thank you.